We're about 40 miles south of Candlestick Point as we welcome you inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. The scene a short time ago, this crowd, they love their 49ers, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. And we're ready for football as the 49ers get set to do battle with Derek Carr and the Oakland Raiders. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. First carry for Doug Martin, the two-time Pro Bowler in Tampa. And he'll get this one up to the 26. The tackle by Eric Armstead. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now Carr throwing on second down. And this is caught by Martavis Bryant. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Snap comes at one, and it's Carr. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap, to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Second down, Martin. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and just like that, it's third down. In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys. And that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them. And now, instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. Tried to get away, but could not. Eric Armstead able to run him down for a loss of a yard. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Here's Carr, and he finds Cook. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. A Raiders first down, Carr hooking up with Cook. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, 
He's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive going to playing so far. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. On second down, here's Carr. And complete right side to Cook. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is starting. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Bad time to get a delay of game penalty there. Not that there's a good time, but that makes it third and six. Shotgun now for Carr. And it's caught, and he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, he did everything but get him in the end zone there, but now they're set up golden opportunity, strong opening drive, and they're knocking on the door. And the way that they did it, now look where they are on the field, all right? This is naturally set up for a running play, isn't it? But with his ability to throw the football, his accuracy on this drive, you might want to think about a pass play in this situation. Mm, interesting. Time to find out. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. Now, whistles here, and I believe one of the Raider linemen might have been moving. Well, maybe he was going to be involved in that play from his tight end spot, and he jumped. Yeah, don't tell me that those guys don't like to block. That's what we say about them nowadays in the NFL. But I think he felt he was one of the key pieces in that play and wanted to get out and execute the assignment very fast. Well, that false start knocks him back behind the 10 now as they'll try again first and goal. Carn out of throw, and that's incomplete. Used to have a coach just tell us all the time, those scouting reports aren't just to use up paper, guys. Well, nowadays, you know, we're watching a computer screen, right? They scouted this team very well. Know that they like to use the running backs in the passing game. They covered that play successfully. So an incomplete pass a moment ago, and that leads to second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Solomon Thomas there on the tackle. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Car now on third and goal. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Now to try the field goal, here's Daniel Carlson. The kick by Carlson is good. And the Raiders jump out to a 3-0 advantage. Now that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So, some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. And what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick. 
right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. After the made field goal, Carl Sennell sets up to kick this away. Here's James. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Time to get a look at the 49ers again here on offense, and this is a team that they've seen things go south for this crew from Northern California, and a lot of people thought... Oh, I saw what you did there. Oh, you things like that? Things went south for the team from Northern California. Yeah, well yeah, done. Directional miss, yeah, directional Yeah, kind that. of a play on words. <laughs> okay. But many thought that they were going to take a leap this year, and we know the injury they had at quarterback, but now they're 1-6. and six. Yeah, and remember when Jimmy Garoppolo got traded for last year, he won his five starts. So you mentioned that optimism. They've won two of their last 30 games when Jimmy Garoppolo has not started at quarterback for them. 13 straight losses now in the month of October. Maybe the good news, the schedule does lighten up a bit going forward. They'll be at Arizona, home for the Raiders then, in what could be the final battle of the Bay, and then home for the Giants before their bye week, week 11. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Green 39! Green 39! Now the Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breda. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. Set! Green, 39! Bathard. And incomplete on the deep ball. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Harris now to return. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that will help him. And he fires one that's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Richard Sherman. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. When we talk about the best corners in the league, we're usually saying shutdown corners. Guys, you can't complete passes against. Richard Sherman fits that definition to a T. The best part of his game, no wasted moves. He studies the opponent so well, hard, hard, hard to get a pass on Richard Sherman. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Brita CD, an undrafted free agent from a season ago, and with McKinnon out, he's really helped fill the running void for the 49ers. Yeah, remember, they got Jarek McKinnon as a free agent and expect him to be a three-down back for them. As you mentioned, out for the season with an ACL injury. Almost fitting that Matt Brita stepped into the breach for him. They were college teammates at Georgia Southern. Brita leading the league in rushing, tied for the lead, I should say, through the first three weeks of the season. And don't forget in reserve, Kyle Juszczyk, their fullback, who can take some plays at running back as well. They'll run it now out of the gun. And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Now let's go. Blue Lander. To throw is Bethard. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. 
And they weren't in zone coverage, they were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. Now Beathard. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There was nothing available there for him. And Gold is able to put it through. And that will tie us at 3-3. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. And give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They start the drive with Martin. They're able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. From the gun now on third down, Carr. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A pickup of 10, and it's enough for an Oakland first down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Car to throw on second down. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. They go play action here on first down. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack. Back at the 47-yard line. Solomon Thomas in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. And off comes to Martin. 
And he takes it across midfield to the 45. Eight yards here, so that gets him back within striking distance. And now it's third down. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Throwing his car on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Townsend to punt it. The speedster Dante Pettis back deep to return. And the 49ers getting set to trot out there. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy go. with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Hey, here we go now. Here's Bether to throw. Got his target, Pierre Garçon. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one goes for 36 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Now it's the Florida Atlantic alum. This is Alfred Morris. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Four down, four down. All right, here we go. To throw is Bethard. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Play action is supposed to be used to slow down pressure, slow down blitzes. In this case, though, if it takes a little too long to develop, you got people right in your face. And lucky just to get rid of the ball with the arm going forward. Could have been a fumble. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. All right, here we go. 319! 319! Back to throw Bathard. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. And that one good for 16 yards and a first. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat Let's first. Go. And that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Now let's go! Here's Burita. 
And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. This is Breda, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The Niners on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. Green, 39. They'll throw here, Bather. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked by Daryl Worley. We've got a second here. Let's take a peek around the league. What's coming up week eight? A couple big games as we near the halfway point of the season, Charles. I'm mainly looking at but Philly and Jacksonville and London and then New Orleans and Minnesota. That should be interesting. Yeah, you're exactly right. Philly and Jacksonville, both teams struggling right now. The Eagles have already lost four games. They lost three all of last season. Both of those teams need a win in a big way. New Orleans and Minnesota, the Saints are on a heck of a roll right now. They've won five in a row, but the Vikings quietly have won three straight and seem to be getting their footing on defense again. And how about Green Bay? They had the week off this past week. Big win over San Francisco at home on a Monday night. They now head out to face the 7-0 Rams in Los Angeles. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that one. That is a big one indeed. Aaron Rodgers, Todd Gurley, let's do this. A nice job there as he rumbles for nine, and it'll be back to a third and three. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Carr going to try and throw on third down. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Here now, Johnny Townsend as he'll kick it away for the second time. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and ten. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know what, a good one going finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Now a play fake here on first down. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Now let's go. Boom, let it. Now it's Breda. And now the ball's out, fumbled near midfield, and the Raiders have recovered. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, right, preach go. it, Green, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over, yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Oh. 
Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. Here's Martin as they begin on the ground. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Give him two yards that time, and it's going to leave him with a third and 11 situation. The Raiders on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and 11. They give to Martin. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. And now the 49ers signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here now, Johnny Townsend, as he's on to punt for Oakland. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. Uh, I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try and think with them here. Try to play field position maybe, turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense, who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> Here's Beathard to throw. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Garrett Selleck, the tight end, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. Well, CD taking a peek at some of the injuries from around the league in week seven. We did have a few. Quan Alexander on that Bucks defense went down with an injury. They'll be monitoring Sony Michelle in New England. Now remember, they already lost Jeremy Hill, Rex Burkhead out of that backfield. So a couple injuries to note. Certainly, and Quan Alexander in the middle of the Tampa Bay defense, which was already struggling. They may not get him back the rest of the season. Sony Michelle, they're hoping to get him back after a few weeks. Albert Wilson in Miami has made big plays all season long, has a hip injury. That could cost him some serious time, if not the season. LaShawn McCoy, Melvin uh. Gordon. They're hoping to get them back in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, interesting that they won without Melvin Gordon last week. That was a big win. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll drop the throw. And able to haul it in is Kittle. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Hurry up, here we go. Boom, landing. Back to throw here. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll make it a second down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat, 
give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. So second and eight here after the pass right, play go. for two Blue yards United. on first down. They'll set up to throw. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. And he's taken down inside the 30. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here we go now. Three, 19. On play action, they'll throw. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. All right, here we go. Blue landing. Blue landing. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Looking for a guard. Son, he's got it. Touchdown, 49ers. Pierre Garçon, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Niners are able to cash in for six. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Robbie Gold on for the extra point. Gold able to tack on the extra point. And the lead is now 10 to 3. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. First down, here's the run with Martin. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. So we've reached halftime here on Halloween. And trust me, kids, if you had to look at Charles Davis every game, you'd think every day was Halloween. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Fielded about a yard deep. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's see if they do just that. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half 
and they've had an ability to see what you've done, they're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Well, we got a second here, Charles. Let's look back to some of those crazy finishes in week seven of the NFL last week. I mean, it seemed like every game had a wild finish. It certainly did. Dallas, Washington, Brett Maher off the upright from 52 yards following a questionable penalty against his long snapper to move the ball back five yards. How about Cleveland, Tampa Bay? Cleveland claws his way back in. And then Tampa Bay wins the ball game with Chandler Catanzaro kicking the big field goal from 59 yards in overtime. Remember, he missed a 40-yarder in regulation. Justin Tucker missed an extra point. That's the headlines in and of itself. His first miss in the NFL. And New Orleans gets away with a victory. And New England, Chicago. Chicago throws the Hail Mary at the end of the game. Kevin White, 54 yards. He needed 55. Yeah. Stopped at the one yard. I don't think I've ever seen a Hail Mary come that close but not get in. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. Well, Charles, pretty big piece of news around the NFL on Monday the 22nd. Dallas Cowboys all the talk about them needing a big-time target out wide. They went and got Amari Cooper. The speculation was there. The discussion was there. But then late Monday, as you noted, it became real. The Cowboys decided they needed a WR1 and went to Oakland and got Amari Cooper and gave up their number one draft pick for 2019 in return. What do you think of the, the fit there? I think the fit is excellent. Dallas screaming for a wide receiver who can attract attention, stretch the field, and make big plays over the top. He can do all of that. He should help his quarterback, Dak Prescott, become an even better player. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And San Francisco gets set to go here. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Here's a handoff to begin the drive to Morris. And a short pick up here as he'll get up to about the 22-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. From the 22, here's second and eight. yardage on the play back at his own 19 yard line it's a loss of two now third down now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter yeah but i don't think it's time to abandon the running game i would say keep feeding the horse and i believe he'll eventually reward them especially as we get deeper in the game hurry up here we go three he'll drop to throw 
Going left side here, and it's complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here we go now. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Over the middle to Kittle, complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Hurry up, here we go. They run with Breida, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come right, up go. first and 10. They run with Morris. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Niners on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall yes, essence of the running game. Looking to throw. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? All right, here we go. This is Morris. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Hurry up, here we go. Bathard. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll make it second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. His throw caught right around the six. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 
A good pick up there, 26 yards. To throw is Bethard. Got a man. Touchdown, 49ers. It's Selleck. Garrett Selleck. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers add on to their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. Gold with the extra point, and the lead is now 17-3. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Here's Harris to return it. And now here come the Raiders. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Throwing on first down is Carr. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Cook. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. Carr now hitting on two-thirds of his passes. 10 for 15 so far. First and 10. Now a play fake, Carr. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. A wise move there, looked like nobody open. Now second down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Here's Martin. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On third down, Carr. And an alley to run. Nice stiff arm. Underused, but still effective. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 14 yards is the pick up there at a Raider first. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. They run the counter with Martin. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. They run it again with Martin. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Two yards gets them back to where they started, but now third and 10. They know that old expression, it's not my night. 
it hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. To throw its car. That's going to be caught. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. They'll run for it with Martin. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. So stuff from the two, now what? You know me pretty well. What do you think I want here? Play action? Definitely. Let him get outside and create. And if he has to run it, he has a little bit more space. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. They'll give it to him up the middle. And I think they stopped him again. They did at the one-yard line. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Well, as the play call comes in on third down, you have to think about four down territory here. Down a few touchdowns. They need points, and they need big points. The San Francisco defense trying to hold tough again. This is third and goal. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Brandon, it's easy to make decisions from right up here where we are, right in the cheap seats. But let's be frank about this one. This isn't even a decision as far as I'm concerned. They have to go for it here. Field goal does you almost no good as time's running out in the game. If you want to win, you have to be aggressive here. Carlson able to put this one through. And a second field goal here gets him back within 11 now. It's 17-6. to six. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? After the made field goal, Carl Sinell sets up to kick this away. Here's James. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bifema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A very solid gain of 27. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. Four down, four down. Three up, here we go. Three, nine, three. And they'll go ground game here three, with a tailback. Three. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. 
run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. They run again with Breida. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. In on the stop, it's to here Whitehead. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Now let's go. Bleed it. Now Beathard. No bottle. The fumble. It's out. It's loose. And the Raiders have recovered. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And yeah, now that door jar, two-score game, so hold on here. Not down in the fourth. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Well, that's pretty symptomatic about how things have gone here. That play was just shut down right from the start. And yeah, not going to give them a lot of confidence to help turn things around. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Again, it's Martin. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. They'll get a couple yards back, but not more than that. They'll be left with 12 yards to go on third down. What an advantage having a elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Throwing his car on third down. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And last time, the fumble, the turnover. Now they still have the lead, but I don't think coaches care. The turnovers will bother them no matter what the scoreboard says. If that's the relief that you still have the lead, but coaches look at what if and what it should be. Turning the ball over when they get a chance to score more points and increase the lead. That's what's going to affect them. And they're also thinking the future weeks, maybe when the game's closer, right? No doubt about it. You want to clean up everything. Let's just be honest about it. They want everything to be perfect at all times. They don't want to give up anything that's going to hurt their team. So a little more space to operate now. First and 10 from right around the 12. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Now it's Morris. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. 
Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick outs, things that they consider safe. The Niners on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. Here's Beathard to throw. Under pressure now, and Beathard goes down to the turf. And Charles, they only needed a yard there. They try to pass the football. What do you think? Well, I can't really go all out and kill them for the call because that third and one fake and throw it over the top for a big play, that often does work. But in this situation, the pressure got to him. Here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been terrific so far. So out come the Raiders. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's something that there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. And brought in by the tight end, Cook. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They need a touchdown, the two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. Car to throw on second down. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Now, ready. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Shotgun now for Carr. Flushed out right, and he'll get it down here to the 43. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Now Carr throwing on second down. And that one was nearly picked. Not sure he was accounting for the free safety. Now it brings up third down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Here's Carr to throw. He completes it to Bryant. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On first and 10, here's Carr. He completes it to Jordy Nelson. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Carr to throw again. And an alley to run. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. 
19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Raider linemen might have been moving. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got it for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. That false start knocks them back behind the 10 now as they'll try again first and goal. Get down, get down. Come on, come on. Now Carr. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the former first rounder, Jimmy Ward. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, yeah, down two scores. Three, so that three. forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. And I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here we go now. Boom, they stay on the ground. Again, it's Breida. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. The Niners on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and six. Here we go now. 3 19. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Hey, go down, go down. Now let's go. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. time and that should just about do it listen anytime you take a knee to end a game that means you've won it so it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd isn't there and the home crowd applauding they're happy with what they've seen chalk this one up in the left hand column for a win yeah that's right head to the locker room throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids your gloves your towels get to share it with the home team and Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The 49ers get the win here at home as we say so long from Santa Clara.